Hello and welcome to a new episode of the CTO show with Mehmet. My name is Mehmet and in each episode I discuss different topics from emerging technologies, digital transformation, cybersecurity, and at the same time we discuss also business topics related to technology as well. And as you know by now, sometimes on my show I have thought leaders and experts who would share from their perspective about both technology and business. And today I'm very pleased to be joining me in a late time for him from Vancouver, Canada, Manuj. Manuj, he's a subject matter expert. He's actually uh, have a long experience working with different technologies. He also worked for Microsoft, IBM, and different other uh, places as well. Uh, and But I would leave it to Manuj to introduce himself. Manuj, just can you a little bit tell us more about you, about your experience and you know like how uh, what what are you up to thank you so much for having me excited to be here um, uh, so yeah my name is manu jagarwal i've been in the technology space for about 30 years and i have worked with uh, hundreds of startups helping them go from idea to market i work with uh, microsoft ibm pearson education i have four patents in artificial intelligence uh, i've read, authored two books on technology uh, some of the work that I have done, it has been actually recognized by President Obama and Bill Gates. Um, so yeah, I mean, my background has been quite diverse, uh, delving into various technologies, various industries, healthcare, education, uh, logistics, uh, uh, real estate. So uh, technology is just fun. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you will agree with that. Uh, yes. Those of, uh, uh, those of you us enjoy solving tough problems using technology. It's like a hobby, it's like fun. So that's what I'm all about. Yeah, actually, Manuj, you have a very, I would say, rich uh, like experience. But always myself, I'm uh, curious to know, because I'm, I'm in technology as well. So I'm cu always curious to know, what was the turning point you know, in your life that motivated you to pursue this passion for computers and programming? So my story is that I grew up in India and, uh, you know, my, my career started at 15 working in a factory for $2 a day. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, I wanted to do something more with my life. And one day I was sitting uh, at lunch hour in the factory, flipping through some business magazines and learning about the stories of these successful tycoons. Uh, I got some inspiration. And at that time, I didn't realize it. But um, of course, later on, I realized that, you know, something had shifted in me. And at that point, uh, computers were very new. And uh, uh, through some, uh, you know, a, a fluke of luck, I found myself enrolled into, into a computer programming course. And I was an extreme introvert at that time. And I'm still an introvert, but at that time I could not communicate well with uh, with others. And when I uh, experienced programming, I was like, you know, this is the best thing ever because <laughs> these machines don't talk back and, you know, you, they obey what you ask them to do. So that's when I really found my passion for programming computers. And I thought to myself, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's really, really cool. And uh, it resonated a lot with me because, uh, you know, I was too much introvert, but and then I took the courage and I said, no, I can talk to the world. I can show what I'm doing. And this is great what you have done, because yeah. I'm interested, you know, like you said, you were working in, in, in the, at the factory. Right. And I'm sure it was like kind of challenging times. But how this help you later on in, in your career, that experience? That's a very good question, because, yeah, I mean, um, every experience we go through, you know, when we are going through it, sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's painful, but you learn a lot if you're willing to learn from it. So in the factory, as you know, any factory, you have to make one thing multiple times, like thousands of times, right? And you, um, you are dependent upon everything working smoothly. Otherwise, even if one component, uh, one machine fails, the whole process stops. Yeah. So... What I learned from that was reliability of the whole system, as well as scalability of the system. So if you don't, uh, if you cannot scale the system, there's not going to be like a, you know, a big business that can be built upon that. And if you try to big, uh, build a big business, you have to make sure every component is reliable and they work together uh, in sync as a system. 
Yeah, that's really uh, insightful. And as you said, anything is an experience by itself. Manuj, you work for the biggest names in technology like Microsoft, IBM and others. Um, but what is, you know, some of the memorable projects that, you know, like you, 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 you think they have impacted the lives of, of millions of people? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have worked in healthcare where we built some systems for the uh, province of British Columbia. So British Columbia is a, is a state, if you will, a, pro a province here in Canada, and it has 5 million residents. So we built uh, the very first digital healthcare system for the province of Canada, where the health records of all the citizens were digitized. Mm -hmm. it, it used to be paper-based. So that was quite impactful. Then we did another project that was... Um, uh, for education field, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, this is a, a typical problem in North America, and I'm sure it's the same problem elsewhere in the world, where 30% of the students in higher education institutions, meaning bachelor's degree, master's degree, they drop out of their degree program in the first year. Yeah. And the reason is, uh, and the reason is because when they enroll, they don't know what they are getting into, and they find out this is not interesting, this is too difficult, whatever it is. So we used AI to um, gather the data from hundreds of thousands of students' records and created a model to understand what courses will suit what students. So as they tried to enroll, we recommended the right courses to them, and the result was they, you know, they were able to finish their degree programs. And so this this uh, uh, platform was actually recognized by Obama and Bill Gates. So that was a uh, quite a uh, quite a uh, exciting project. Yeah, this is really where I see you know the value of technology of you know impacting people. This is really big. Now you mentioned AI and I, you you have like four patents in AI, Manuj yourself, and as a thought leader in this domain, um, what do you think are the most significant breakthroughs over the past couple of years? Well, I mean, you know, everybody is talking about chat GPT. So that has uh, that has to be mentioned here. And I think it is a game changer because um, uh, even as uh, AI expert uh, and many other experts, we used to think that things like this, like chat GPT are like decades away. You know, we used to think, uh, I mean, chat GPT almost has given us a, a glimpse of what uh, a general artificial intelligence will look like because, uh, you know, if in the audience, if uh, you, you know, if, if you're new to AI, there is a concept called general artificial intelligence, which is basically uh, what we see in the uh, science fiction movies where uh, the artificial intelligence is so smart that it can do anything uh, that a human can do, and obviously it can do better. And then there is a point of singularity where AI becomes more uh, smarter than than human beings. So we used to think like this is decades away, this is not going to happen anytime soon. But with uh, you know uh, these these platforms like ChatGPT, now we can see it is you know maybe like two years away, maybe five years away, and uh, that's uh, very very exciting and it's very surprising. At the same time, uh, some people are actually worried, scared as well. So it's a lot of mixed emotions. But yeah, that's what happens when a groundbreaking technology is uh, introduced. Are we going to reach singularity, really, Manuj? Do you think? I think so. I think so. I think so. Yeah. But. I'm, let me also add to this question because I knew that you're going to answer this way. Yeah. Should really people show the worriness that they are showing or they should think about it in a different way? See, I, I, the, uh, every new technology that comes out, um, humans have a tendency uh, to fear the unknown. Yeah. So we are always uh, afraid of the unknown. Secondly, we don't like change, you know. And uh, these technologies are going to change uh, our society in radical ways. So, um, you know, it is estimated that over the next 10 years, uh, for example, all the driving jobs will be eliminated. And there are hundreds of millions of people whose jobs are related to driving all day, right? Because when self-driving cars and vehicles, they become the norm, there's not gonna be any driving jobs. Even the white collar jobs, analysis jobs with chat GPT are, are in danger. Now that is not to for me to scare everybody that what's gonna happen with my job. The idea is that new types of jobs mm -hmm. will be available. So uh, it's not like you will lose, lose your job to AI, but most likely, if you don't adapt, if you don't upskill, you will lose your job to a person who knows AI, 
right? So it's it's a very same way like uh, when uh, before the cars were invented, the whole industry was ho horse cart industry, and everybody was worried what will happen to the horse carts. You know, all the people who are uh, taking care of the horses, cleaning the the roads. Um, you know, what's what's going to happen to those? But as they upskill, they found new jobs. They found better jobs and things prospered. So that's, this is what happens every time new technology is introduced. Uh, and I don't think there's anything to worry about. In fact, we should be excited. We should embrace it. We should understand it. We should say, hey, you know, how do we use it? How do we become more productive and, and things of that nature, right? Actually, I was about to give the same example because usually when I am having like discussions, I'm telling the same thing like, um, I'm challenging people to, you know, write down 10 things that existed not hundred years, 50 years back, and they don't exist anymore today. Like yeah. the postman, right? So we yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, postman horses and many, many others. So really it's uh, yeah. the thing. And I have, and I want you also your opinion. I have a theory that technology and AI is one of these technologies that is helping us to reach something, a point where really the life should be more easy to us, like where maybe the machines are doing the, the hard things and we are doing more the soft things, enjoying the life. Yes, absolutely, That's exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if you, if you look at uh, society before the steam engine was invented, uh, most people used to spend all day just trying to make a living, you know, all day in the fields and in, uh, in the factories, manual labor was, life was very, very tough for 99.99% of the population. But with technology, you know, machines took over, the weekend became a thing, you know, uh, we have two days off and uh, we were able to produce more uh, for the entire society and work less. And now it's the same trend continuing. We are working less. I mean, we are, I mean, human evolution uh, has brought us to a point where we don't need to work as much. We have invented technology to make our lives easier. So uh, that is the trend we are following and, and that's what's gonna continue to happen, right? Yeah, that's that's 100% correct. One thing, um, if I can jump a little bit on the topic, wh when I was, uh, you know, preparing for the, the today's episode, I've seen that you have mentioned that you can break down complex topics, you know, so even a 10 years old, uh, child can understand yeah. it right yeah, yeah 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 so how do you do this because sometimes i have you know challenges i would call them explain for example something very simple as ai so yeah, how yeah. how how you can for example you know dissect this for ai let's say okay so let's say ai is basically what it is is you know our minds are pattern recognizing, recognizing, recognizing machines. So we recognize patterns easily in our mind. So I'll give you an example. Let's say a, a child, five-year-old child touches a hot stove and for the first time, and then uh, he, it's painful and he will realize, oh, okay, I don't want to touch this stove again. So that is one data point. It goes into your mind and the mind recognize the pattern. But now imagine that child is outside in somewhere very cold, Antarctica, uh, it's a, you know, there's a uh, very cold wind blowing. He's, he's wearing some protective uh, heat resistant gloves. And uh, now there are multiple factors in this uh, equation. And now he touches the stove. It doesn't feel, uh, you know, painful. In fact, it feels a little bit pleasant because it's warm and he's getting warmth now. So now the child will automatically learn, you know what, if there are certain conditions, it is okay to touch the stove. Right. So now there are two patterns has been recognized by our mind. But now if you extrapolate this situation to thousands of parameters or variables. So let's say we want to predict the weather in the next 14 days, which depends upon thousands of complex parameters. Or let's say we want to invent a medicine, uh, uh, for example, COVID vaccine. It depends on thousands and thousands of sort of permutations of molecules and whatnot. Our mind is not capable of learning these type of patterns. Our mind can maybe handle three or four patterns, uh, you know, or a variable, sorry, three or four variables, 10 variables, maybe if you're super smart. But then as we go beyond that, complexity becomes so big that we have to rely on machines. And machines are very, very good at collecting millions and millions of data points, millions of variables, 
and then find, finding minute patterns to say, okay, this is what is happening. This is why it happened. If you want to predict the like uh, what will happen in the future, given these parameters, uh, the machine can tell us, right? So, so that basically is what AI is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Make completely sense. And this is the reason I ask you this question again to remove the fear because I always yeah, yeah. tell people, look, like AI is something that humans came up with, right? Yeah, yeah. And it needs a prompt from us still. Like yeah. it, AI, it's uh, it's not like acting by itself. It, it needs to take yeah. order from someone, right? Yeah, so this, exactly. why I ask, this is why I ask you this question. Now, yeah. uh, Maluj, also one, one uh, thing I, uh, I know about, uh, you know, one of the achievements that you have done, like you spoke to in the UN, right? So how was mm -hmm. that? That was amazing, amazing experience, yeah. Was good. Yeah. So, yeah. So I spoke about AI, and the idea was to uh, share thoughts about how AI can be used uh, to eliminate uh, poverty and uh, bring about equality. And uh, you know that that's uh, that's the fundamental. I think, in my opinion, that is the fundamental premise of AI, where uh, it will uh, uh, it will bring about equal opportunities for everyone, um, and it will help people even with the, um, any any drawbacks they have uh, from their background, financial background, economic background, social background, it will help uh, empower everyone equally and bring about that equality. Moreover, um, as these machines, automated processes take over, um, the human element will become more important, like the creativity, emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, empathy, these things will become more important. So um, that, is innate in every human being, right? Yeah. So if we start to cultivate that more, uh, we start to connect with humans more, you know, that will become bring about a society where more or less everybody is equal. Yeah. One more thing, and it will be, I promise, last question about AI, because I have more yeah. two questions. Uh, I've seen also you, in your work, you put some kind of relationship between meditation and AI. Can you tell us yeah, yeah, yeah. more about that? Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, so the thing is, as we were saying earlier, you know, our mind is able to recognize patterns, and uh, what AI is an extension of our mind because whatever it produces, our mind starts to learn it back. You know, we start to see the even though we cannot recognize, okay, you know, because of these parameters, this is happening. But once we see the result, our mind is able to capture it. So, a good example is, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn, these are basically AI algorithms and it they control the information flow in today's world. So when they control the information flow, they tell us what they think is relevant to us. And now our mind starts to learn that and our mind starts to take the shape and start to think, oh, this is the truth. This is how the world is. But if we compare my feed to your feed on this social media platform, it will be totally different. So, um, so that way, you know, our mind is interacting and vice versa with AI. Now, coming to meditation, meditation is basically seeing inside our own mind, learning about ourselves, uh, 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 you know, looking into our subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So, if we learn about ourselves, um, then we become more informed. We we can, uh, you know, achieve higher level of success. So. Just like Facebook is informing us about the world, AI algorithms can help us inform us about our own inner world, about, about our subconscious mind. So that is the link between meditation and AI. Does That's that make sense? Completely. And, you know, it's something I never thought about. And it's a very, um, you know, it's a provoking idea to, to, and I was thinking while you were explaining it, I was thinking, yeah, because actually sometimes when I'm typing, let's say to chat GPT, maybe I'm using my subconscious mind, right? And, exactly, exactly. Uh, and then after a while, maybe the model itself can analyze you know, my subconscious mind, which is we do sometimes yeah. on meditation. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. very, very, very insightful, I would say. Uh, Manuj, yeah. also, I know you, you, you are an entrepreneur and, you know, like now you do some mentoring as well. So uh, because I cover, I try to cover every time uh, in, in one question or two, like what usually you see the most common obstacle that aspiring entrepreneurs face and how they can overcome them. What advice you give? 
the most obstacles are within our, ourselves. Every obstacle that generally we feel is ourselves. It's like uh, anxiety about the future. What will happen if this happens? All these fears that we make up in our minds, um, that's number one. Second is uh, 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 the desire to do everything, meaning uh, they don't want to delegate anything. They think, oh, uh, you know, if I delegate it to somebody else, they're not going to do it as well as I do. So they try to do everything themselves. The third thing is um, they don't do um, market research. So they come up with the idea. They say, oh, you know, this idea, I really like this idea. This is how, uh, you know, I will use it. Uh, uh, and then they find out nobody else agrees with them. Nobody, nobody else is willing to pay for that idea. So it's better to do the market research. And then uh, if people want to pay for it, then build the idea. And then uh, lastly, what I think is this, uh, many people may disagree with me, but I feel like uh, in, the, in, in the entrepreneurial community, particularly in the technology startups, uh, too many people try to raise money too quickly. Mm. So um, until, until you have a you know, good solid business, I believe you should not raise money and you should really focus on uh, getting your first few clients, first few customers. And then if you need to expand, you can go ahead and raise money. And do you think they do this on purpose or like it's because you know this is what other people have done and have succeeded why, why do you think they do yeah. it it is i think it's generally just looking at other people uh, even in media you know uh, you will see news oh congratulations this startup raised 10 million dollars this startup raised 12 million dollars but nobody ever talks about oh this company made uh, you know 100000 in revenue right yeah. Uh, nobody, there is no news which talks about revenue. They only talk about raising money. So people start to think, oh, business is about raising money. It's not about revenue. So, so that is the impact, that is the effect of how, how as we were saying earlier, uh, whatever we consume, information we consume, we think that is the truth. So there you have it. Yeah, and this is, you know, actually this was my final question. Like, um, do you think, like, young entrepreneurs specifically or any at any age because I, you know i can be an, we are entrepreneurs also as well like but do you think we should follow a what i it's known as the bootstrapping model like um, try to grow the business i mean your startup with whatever resources you have um, and have an aim later once it's ready to scale it then you might raise it do you think this is the right approach absolutely. to do it absolutely 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 because if you i mean here is the thing. There are certain types of businesses where you need massive capital. Let, let's say, you know, you're building a Tesla, like, you know, you're building an uh, electric car company. That's a massive, massive investment, right? So um, there you may need investors initially, but generally 90, 98% of the businesses, you don't need that much to start with. I mean, business is about solving other people's problems. And you can do that by sharing your ideas, talking to people and just say, hey, this is a problem. How about I solve it? And they'll say, how are you going to solve it? Okay, I, these are my ideas. This is how I can solve it. Will, do you think uh, this will help you? Yes, it will help me. And that's your business, right? So in my opinion, uh, if you read history, that's how businesses have been developed for centuries and centuries. It is only in the recent uh, years that this term venture capital has come up, this term, you know, raising money has come up. Before that, you know, you used to like uh, borrow money, sell some of your stuff and, you know, have enough to like start a business. And and when you have enough, you continue to reinvest, you grow and, and that's how it used to be, right? So in my opinion, that is the true definition of a business. Uh, you know, I, I have to be biased and I agree with you here because mm. um, I feel sorry sometimes, you know, for companies that come up and, you know, they run out of money that they have borrowed from someone else and then they have to lay off people. So this yeah, is why, yeah. why I'm on this side. Uh, any final thing you want to, to share with us, Manoj, before we close? Well, uh, the only thing I will say is, you know, technology is here to help people. There is nothing to be scared of technology. People who embrace technology, especially at this age right now, it's a very, very exciting age um, because 
never before in a human history so many ground breaking technologies have come together at the same time like you know cloud technology mobile technology ai blockchain crispr uh, you know there are so many things coming together uh, and these are all like you know uh, uh, have potential to change the the way we live and so embracing this technology will help people uh, progress much uh, further much higher much faster so that's my message to everyone to embrace the technology and use it for good well thank you very much manush for being with me today and for your time uh, for my audience um, thank you for watching and tuning in if you are seeing this now on youtube if you are listening on your favorite podcast platforms also, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe either to the YouTube channel or to the um, uh, show on your favorite podcasting platform. If you have any question, any comment about this episode or about the show in general, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly, either by email or LinkedIn or Twitter. I would be more than happy to discuss this. If you are interested yourself, you have brilliant ideas you want to share with others, I would be more than happy also to host you here on the show. That would be my pleasure. And until we meet in the next time, see you soon and uh, thank you for tuning in.